Today, we geek out about the Grim Forest. Hey guys, what's going on? Sleeve from Geek City USA here, and today we're gonna talk about a game by Druid City Games called The Grim Forest. Now, in The Grim Forest, you take on the role of one of the little pigs, and you are fighting to be the first person to build three homes and to build the best three homes, and the person who does that will win the game. I'm gonna take you over here, I'm gonna give you an overview of the game, and I'm gonna kind of show you how a couple of turns will go, and then I'll come back and I will give you my opinion on the game. All right, so let's take a look at Grim Forest. So first thing I wanna show you is this is a Kickstarter edition of the game. Now, not only does it come with an awesome sleeve, but there's also magic in this box. The Kickstarter edition of Grim Forest sets up automatically like this. And boom, that's it. It is that easy to set up the Kickstarter copy. Now, if you don't have the Kickstarter copy, it's gonna take you a little bit longer to set up. But when you set it up, you are going to put the three locations and each are gonna start with a, a mega resource. So you'll have five straw, four wood, and three brick in each location. Now in a four player game, you would also add this market tile and this would have one of each resource on it. As well as you would also give each player a gather market card uh, to give them the option to go to that location. But we won't be doing a four player game example on this, so we'll set this aside. Now you will notice that there's also a single die in the box. Now this is for a two player game. And in a two player game, prior to selecting where each pig is going to go, you would roll this and that is where Prince Regal goes. So in this case, I rolled the wood. So he would go to the forest location and he would take half the resources at that location. Okay, so now the purpose of this game is to be the first player to build three buildings. Now, you can build all of them being the same uh, style of building. So in this case, you could build uh, a wooden house, or you can build a straw house, a brick house, uh, you know, one of each, three of each, it doesn't matter. The only rules for that are you can only build or only have one of each in process at a given time. So the green player can only have one straw, one wood, and one brick house uh, in the process of being built. Now, if they completed the brick house, let's say um, she was a brick house, yeah. Let's say she completed that or he completed that. Now he could start another brick house. And you could only have at most five uh, houses on your board at a time, So, which makes sense because if you're trying to complete three total, uh, the math kind of works out on that one. So each player is going to take their player card as well as the pig that's in their color, and then three cards that indicate gather wood, or gather brick, gather straw, or gather wood. And of course, you would add in the gather market card in a four player game. Each player will also get the player aid card, which tells you the round order and what happens in each, set, in each phase of the game, and then as well as some house building costs and the bonuses that you get for uh, building walls as well as to be the first builder who completes uh, a building one of those buildings. All right, so the very first turn of the game, you're gonna indicate who the, the first player is by giving them the player token. And in the book, it says that the person to most recently have eaten bacon gets the first player token. Now, here's the deal, we're playing pigs. So in a three player game, the only thing that I can surmise is one of these pigs has eaten their orange brother. Now you're going to start out with the gather phase. And in the gather phase, you are going to first choose a fable and a gather card. Now we don't have any fable cards to start out and we'll get to those in a moment, but we'll have a gather card. So each player is going to look at their cards, a gather brick, a gather wood, and a gather straw, and they are secretly going to pick which card they're going to use. And this is going to tell them which location they're visiting. So let's say, for example, we'll have the purple player will gather straw, and that will be the card that they play. This means that they are planning on going here. Now we'll say that the blue player is going to gather wood, and we'll say that the green player is also going to gather wood. All right, so then at the same time, we are going to reveal our gather cards. All right, so we have a gather straw and two gather woods. So then you're going to go ahead and put your piggies into the location that they're going. And then you're going to take the resources. So in this case, the purple pig will get five straw. And then the, uh, the green and the blue are going to split the four that's here. And if there's ever an odd number here, so if there were 
uh, five here, you would round down. So each player would get two and there would be one left over. So we'll say we'll give two to the green and one and two to the blue player. Now nobody has picked brick, so that will stay there this turn. Now that would end the gather phase. Now we're gonna move on to the, to the build phase. So during the build phase, you can build a house section, which is you know, building one, one of these pieces to build your house. You can draw one fable card, or you can gain either a straw, a wood, or a brick. Or if you have a friend, you can use your friend's special action. And you can only use, one, you can only use a specific friend's uh, special action once per turn. So in this case, we'll start, with, uh, we'll start with this purple player, who's player one. And we'll see here, we're going to build a house section, and it costs two to build the floor. So purple player is going to take their five straw, turn it in, get three in return. And then the purple player would take the straw base, the straw floor, and put it there. Now they have one other action, and uh, let's say we're going we're gonna to take a fable card. So we'll take this fable card, and we'll take a look at what it is before our next turn. So we'll just go ahead and put it in their player area. Now let's say that it's this player's turn next. He has two wood. He's going to go ahead and build. He'll build the base of a building, and he'll also take a fable card. And then the green character, he's going to build some wood as well. And then he will actually also choose to, uh, we'll say take an item from the supply and he'll take a brick. Why not? All right, so that ends the, the build phase. Now we would move on to the cleanup phase and you would pass the first player marker clockwise, even though it's all odd because I went this way, but you get the idea. And then you're going to make sure you have all your cards back. You go home, go to your home. Why won't you go to your home? And then you refill all of these locations. So again, you put another uh, mega resource in each place. So you look here, now there's six brick. All right, so now we'll actually do the turn order the right way this time. Uh, we're gonna start here with the green player. I think we're gonna work to get our wood building finished. Player two, we're gonna look at his fable card. So we'll say that he'll play this card and he's also going to go and get brick. So what you'll do is you would put your fable card on top of your gather card and have it like so, so that way you'll reveal your fable card first. I'll go over to the purple player. Uh, let's just say, let's just keep going for straw. So again, we'll put the fable on top of the gather card and set that, and set that down there. Okay, so now we go around in player order and we're going to reveal the fable cards. Now the first player does not have a fable card, but the second player does. So let's look at this. When revealed, play on a location, stays in play until discarded, and any player who's alone in this location gains one of each resource. So he was going for brick, so he's gonna put this, he's gonna throw it right there on the table. He's gonna put this in the brick area. This player here is going to show I have the wolf. Before collecting resources, if any player is caught by the wolf, destroy all resources at that location before anyone can collect them. So they are going to go into the supply and grab the wolf miniature. You see a nice little miniature here. And I don't know, as a purple player, I'm not going for brick, I'm going for straw. I'm gonna put the wolf here. We're gonna go back and we're going to reveal what our gather cards are. Gather wood, gather brick, and gather straw. So you can send your people to each location that they were going to. But now again, remember, we have the wolf here. And again, so before this person would collect the resources, we're going to destroy all resources at that location. So these are gone. Now, in return, this would mean that at the end of the gather phase, any player who's alone in this location gains one of each resource. Go ahead and take your resources. And this guy being the only one here can get one of each. And then we go on and we'll say the build phase. All right, so the green player is going to look at this card and see I can build the walls of my house for four resources. So I'm going to take four wood and build the walls of my home. Now, because that player has built the wall, they gain a friend. Now, when you draw a friend, you have, to, you have to draw a friend card, even if you have one already. Now, you can choose to keep this friend or to give it to one of the opposing players, and that would replace a friend that they have. So if they have a really powerful friend and you kind of want to mess them over a little bit, you can replace their friend. So let's see. Green player gets Goldilocks. This one is just right. 
As a special action, draw the top three Fable cards, choose one to keep, and put the other two on top of the Fable deck in any order. For my second action, because I already built the walls, I'm going to use her power. So I'm going to take the top three Fable cards and choose one to keep, and put the other two in order however I want them. Uh, I'm going to take the Magic Flute, and then I am going to, I guess it really doesn't matter, I'll just put these in order like that. Go on to player two. So again, we'll look at the build phase. What are our other options? We can draw a Fable card or gain a straw, wood, or brick, or use a special action. So we will draw a Fable card first, and I'll take a look at it, and we already know what it is, but he doesn't. So end of gather phase, gain one Fable card for every player at your location. Okay, uh, we're gonna take a brick resource. All right, so we go to the purple player, and the purple player has eight resources, or eight, eight straw, so we are going to build uh, the walls, and that costs four, and then we get a friend. Let's look at our friend card. The Frog Prince, the spell is broken. And for the second action, we will take a Fable card. So now we are going to do the cleanup phase. So everybody go home, run. The monsters are cleared now. The monsters go away as well. We take all our gather cards, put them back, and we pass the first player token. All right, now at the end of the build phase, after everybody is built, if one of the players played their last piece and they completed three buildings, they would win the game. Now, if multiple players uh, actually have, were able to finish their buildings in the same turn, you then go by who has the stronger building. So brick being the strongest, then wood, then straw. So if you have one of each, let's say this guy has a straw, a wood, and a brick home, but this guy has one brick and two wood homes, this would be the stronger, uh, the stronger set. Therefore, that guy would be the winner. And that's how you play Grim Forest. Now I want to show you guys these miniatures here a little bit. Because these just look, they're fantastic. So this is the troll miniature. We have here the giant. Which I have to say, I don't know if you guys have seen Robin Hood Men in Tights. This looks like Little John. So whenever I play this guy, I always, a toll is a toll. If we don't get a toll, we don't get no rolls. And then here we have the dragon miniature. And of course you have the big bad wolf, not to be confused with the little bad wolves. The big bad wolf's pet maybe? Maybe it's the uneducated family member? I don't know. He's smart on two legs and he crawls. Whatever it is, that is how you play the game. Now once again, as if the self-setup of the Kickstarter edition wasn't awesome enough, there's one other feature of the Kickstarter edition that the uh, retail edition will not have, and this is instant cleanup. And the magical sleeve with all of the powers safely back where it belongs. All right, guys, so that was the Grim Forest. Now, let me start by saying that the presentation on this game is beautiful. Um, you, you saw in that video there the, the attention to detail from the moment you open the box and the game trays and the organization and the layout. Everything in this game is beautiful. So let me start by saying that thank you Druid City Games for putting together a game that looks great both as you're pulling it out of the box and as you put it on the table. The art on this game looks great. The player boards are beautiful both with the art but they're also, each one is cut differently. So it's just a nice little touch that kind of helps the game stand out. The miniatures in the game are, are great sculpts, and overall the presentation of the game looks really, really good. Now, let's talk about the gameplay, and, and I want to comment right away on something, as I've seen some people comment in forums on BoardGameGeek, that they, they look at this game and they say, oh, it's a fairy tale game, this is a kid's game. Let me tell you, you're wrong. So. I've played this game with my, with my kids. This has been a great family night game. It's accessible to them. There's some reading involved, so the younger kids, you kind of have to help out with that if they're not readers yet. Um, but the theme is perfect for little kids. Yes, it's, you know, it's accessible to them. There's a reference to Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty, Pinocchio. It's everything that kids are comfortable with. It's accessible to them, they can play the game, and they'll have a riot with it. I think it's the perfect game for family game night, and I can't stress that enough. I'm going to go right out there right away and say that this is a great game for family game night. But... You know what else this is a good game for? This is a good game for when you're hanging out with a couple of, of your guy friends, like the first time that I played this game, where I just pulled it out with a couple of my buddies and we just said, okay, we're gonna play Grim Forest. It's a new game, looks beautiful, right? And this game got super cutthroat right away. We were trash talking and we had 
an absolute blast with this game. The gameplay on the game is fun, it's easy to pick up, it's a simple go to a location, gather the resources, and build. And it seems like there's real easy to pick up the strategy. There is so much strategy in the game. Where are they going? Are they going to go for the brick? Uh, I think they're going to go for the brick, so I'm going to try to build up straw, and maybe I can build my house quicker than they can, even though it might be a, a weaker house. So there's all sorts of strategy that you could put into this game. So I want to touch on the component quality. So both in the box and out of the box, I think the component quality is fantastic. I did see some reports when the Kickstarter first shipped that some people, they had maybe their pigs were detached from the base, but something like that to me is a minor thing, and I don't think, I think that was the exception and not the norm. Uh, personally, I didn't have any issues whatsoever. I was missing uh, a, one of the roofs to one of my pieces, and I sent an email, and I, without even thinking of it, three, four days later, I had a new one in the mail. So I, I couldn't be happier with the response from Druid City Games on that. Uh, but overall, the, the components are great on this game. The game trays uh, for the resources is a nice touch because... I'm very, very, I like to be very organized. And to just be able to pop off that lid and you have everything nice and organized for play, to me is great. And there's two of them, you can put one on each end of the table, which I, I, I couldn't have been happier with that. So all in all, I cannot recommend this game enough if you have a family game night. If you have family game night, this game belongs on your table. This game was made for family game night. However, if you have a regular game night, this game has a place there as well. This game is accessible for both light gamers and heavy gamers. It's a fun game, and that's what Game Night boils down to, is having fun. And this game fit that bill, and there's enough strategy that keeps me interested. So I would recommend this for both ends of the spectrum, from family game night all the way to a regular big kids game night. Big kids meaning adults like myself. So one last thing that I want to say, this video is not sponsored by Druid City Games. They have nothing to do with this. They probably don't even know that my channel exists. Um, so pay attention to that before I say this next part. I was so impressed at how this game looked and the presentation of it and the attention to the game trays and everything. To me, this game has me looking to Druid City Games in the future to see what else they have. They've definitely raised the bar with how good a game production can be. All right, guys, that's it. I'm Lee from Geek City USA. Thanks for hanging out with us. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know if you've played the game, if you like the game, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me. Uh, be sure to subscribe and like and all that jazz, and I'd love to interact with you guys on our Facebook page. So once again, I'm Lee from Geek City USA. Thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll see you next time.